Welcome back. We're going to continue talking about property, this time with Jonathan Fowl, who's going to give us some tips on how to get on the London property ladder. Hi, oh, hopefully, Hello. absolutely. Hi, how are you, how are you doing? I'm well, I'm well. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you very well. So we're hearing from Ariana and Ian earlier. What yes. did you think, first of all, of Ariana's Well, story? Ariana, it's, it's brilliant to see uh, someone of, of such a young age who's been able to, with her own savings, put mm. the deposit down and find a property suited to her uh, and get herself on the yeah. property ladder. Even after so many disappointments as well, she carried on. Exactly. And yeah. it, it, as, as she mentioned before, it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world in London property and, mm. uh, and there are some different tips that I'm going to talk about tonight to, to prevent you being gazumped or having yeah. the seller find a better offer and go with that or for whatever reason lose out on the deal. Yeah. But it's great. And what I loved about her story was that she's already thinking ahead. She already has an exit strategy that she wants to do over mm -hmm. the next two years, but she's bought somewhere there sh where she's already seen an opportunity to yeah. add value to it, which is a very, yeah, very important really thing, yeah. especially in the, in the current market. Uh, any first time buyer, you have a choice. You're either purely looking to buy your first place to live in yourself, mm -hmm. or of course you do what I did and your first property is an investment property where you're renting it out yeah. in order to uh, generate more income for yourself, but at the same time, if you can buy a property that you can add value to, which mm -hmm. is what I did, you buy it for this level, you spend a little bit of money refurbishing it, and it then gets it. revalued, mm -hmm. you can remortgage, take the money out, still own it, and then go and buy the next one. Yeah. But uh, her idea on the hostel is also brilliant too, because it's a, a hotel or a hostel is the highest yielding property asset you can never ha you can never own. So she's if on to a winner then. She's on to a winner, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's full, she's got to make yeah. sure of her capacity, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she's right. getting people there. Otherwise, it's not the highest returning. <laughs> but if it's a good quality hostel, a good quality hotel, uh, you're charging higher rates than any landlord ever could. Mm. And that's why, if you, if you get it right, the uh, the income is yeah. very good. Well, we do wish her all the best with that. Absolutely. Now we do have a question, Jonathan, because I needed your help with this one because I really don't, have no idea how to answer it, and I'm being <laughs> honest, right? So we need your expertise here. Sure. This one's from Claudia. And she says, hi, Christy, I'm so frustrated right now. I sold my flat, which was on the market for a while, but now I'm stuck at my relatives with no hope of moving. The house prices in my area have shot up as there are plans to build a big shopping center in the area where I am. It's fine, but my son and I need our own space now and just want to settle. Please, I need help. Help her, help her. <laughs> oh, the joys do? of having to live with relatives, oh. hey? Well, um, at least they've taken her in. That's a nice thing. Isn't that it? is a well, very so, nice so, thing, yeah. absolutely. And I'm sure they're a lovely family. I'm yeah. sure they're wonderful. But as, you, as she said very openly, she needs space for herself yeah, and for her yeah. son. Um, what's happened since she sold the property is it's an area of, it's, it's, it's an example of regeneration, yeah. right? And regeneration is when private organizations and mainly public companies, the councils or, or the government, mm -hmm. decide that they want to invest money into that area yeah. in order to improve the, not just the facilities for the local residents, but to mm -hmm. provide more opportunities to the local businesses. And yeah. all of these areas and types of regeneration, it leads to a natural increase in property. Prices, yeah. So she has unfortunately <laughs> sold her property at a time before the announcement's mm. been made or before the shopping centre has been has been planned to go ahead. So there's every chance now that that area is going to continue for the going foreseeable up. future to yeah. go up. And she does love the area. She does love the idea of being close to her relatives, but not under the same <laughs> roof. <laughs> So the, here's what I would tell her to do. If she was to get a physical map of the location that she's in and put where her flat was or where her area is in the middle mm -hmm. and start drawing equal zones, almost like a ripple effect, circular lines around the areas and town that she is in and right. see what other areas that she could like to live in, which are close to that area, but haven't yet benefited from right. the growth okay. to start looking in there. Mm -hmm. And if she sees, for example, another town close by where she does like, it's a nice place, it has some of the same features and, and facilities there, and it doesn't yet have the growth of what's happening with re regeneration, mm. especially if it's a little bit further out, she'll probably find that she'll be able to buy a bigger place with the budget that she has. Yeah, okay. So it's all about, rather than squared zones, I mean, London's a great example. Uh, going back to what we're talking about tonight about helping first-time buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, 
trying to be a first time buyer and buying in zones one or two now in London. If okay. we think about the zone map in London, we start in the in the heart of zone one, mm -hmm. and then the zones are a circular effect, aren't they? They yeah, break yeah. that they they, they, they they breach out. Um, it's it's very expensive now, and so unless you do have a very large amount of cash hidden under the bed or or a way for you that rich you've been relatives. saving for, or rich relatives, <laughs> the the bank of mum and dad is always yeah. a good one. Um, <laughs> Then, uh, then you're looking realistically at the zone four, five, six, even further mm. out past it. But there are two different ways a first time buyer can look at things. The first one, as I said before, is you are buying purely with the idea to buy a property for yourself to live in. Mm -hmm. And as, as Ariana did before, she saved up um, just, just under a 30% deposit. It was effectively a 25% deposit and the bank had agreed to lend her 75% Mm -hmm. of the property. Yeah. But the first thing you need to do, the first step, let me just take a step back. Step number one is make sure your credit history and credit report is as good as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is as beautiful as it possibly can be. And let me, let me explain. We all can get access to our own credit reports. Experian, for example, is mm -hmm. the largest credit agency in the UK. It costs five pounds to download and see your full credit report and it goes back many many years okay. and if there's ever been a default on a, on a phone bill or a mispayment on a credit card bill it is there mm. and all of those negative red crosses or red dots against your name when a lender is looking to do a mortgage application the first thing they do is a credit check mm. you though have the ability to make physical amendments or notes to your credit report. Oh, right. okay. So if three years ago, I mean, to use an example, I once had a county court judgment against me because I had a tenant in one of my investment properties who wasn't paying their gas, wasn't paying the electricity, but the name on that property was registered yes. to me. And so as these bills were being chased to me in a property that I wasn't living in, the tenants didn't tell me about it. Oh and it wasn't gosh. until later yeah. on that I had the request to go to court to pay an unpaid bill. Now, I didn't know any of this at the time, but when I saw it on my credit file, I was able to go back and show and prove that that big cross in my credit file mm -hmm. was due to this specific right, information. Okay. So when banks are doing credit checks on you, whenever they see a mark against your name for a mispayment or any of those mm -hmm. things, if there's nothing else to justify, it's gonna be very difficult to get the, the, the loan that you want. Yeah, so you, yeah. the first thing is, Make sure that you know what your credit file looks like, what your credit report looks like. Have an understanding as to what your credit score is mm -hmm. and if there's an issue with it and it is looking very poor or something's happened recently, the reality is it's going to be very difficult to get a mortgage. Right. So you need to look at, f at, at what family and friends around you could be a guarantor. Mm -hmm. Or what you can do, which I've done before, is you can get someone to take the mortgage on your behalf and legally, you are responsible for that okay. individual mortgage it's as well too. There's always round things, isn't there? <laughs> there is, if you know what you're doing. So what Claudia is saying, she's lost hope, but there always, there's always hope yes. if you should speak to the right people. And, yes, yeah, yeah that, that, that's true. So, But the first thing is, whether you go down buying through it yourself, and I'll talk mm -hmm. about the help to buy scheme in a sec, or whether you're buying a buy to let, if your credit report is listed with missed payments and defaults and, and yeah. no justification of it, it's just not going to happen. All right. So you've, that's the first thing you have to get done. We'll cover the rest in two minutes, you think? Oh, yes, oh, we come will. On. Okay. I've got to speed up now. So the first thing is to keep in mind, firstly is if you're looking to get on the ladder, take advantage of the help to buy scheme. Okay. It's effectively, rather than having to put in a 25% deposit, you only have to put down a 5% deposit. Right. It's government backed, mm -hmm. therefore the interest rate is a lot lower than what it traditionally would be. Yeah. And it means that rather than putting a 25% deposit, it's only 5% up to a property for purchase worth 600,000. Yeah. And the second thing to keep in mind is rather than just love the property, if you can always, as Ariana has done, look at ways if you can buy something that you yourself can add value to, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. will always be better off in the long run if you can generate that type of uh, increase in capital value from adding things to yeah. it. Okay, that's it. We uh, finished? Yeah. Oh, we finished in time. That's brilliant. Well, yeah, I was so. right. You said two minutes to go. <laughs> I'm so making I'm not sure rush now. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Great advice as usual, Jonathan. Great.
That's been brilliant. Okay, so we have reached the end of the show and it's been great speaking to all our guests today and I really hope you've got some great advice for yourselves there. So, you know, as, as we've been saying, if you do really want something such as a new career, your own home, don't give up because I think there's always a way when you really want to do something. Speak to the right people, be persistent in your efforts and you will succeed. If you want more information about the show, you can visit the website, chrissybshow.tv. And if you'd like to email me, you can do so on chris at chrissybshow.tv. See you again soon.